Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Infra meeting. Um, the first topic to the agenda, which is um, the state of serveron.com. So serveron.com is a mirror um, in our infrastructure. It has been done for most of months. And last week, I think that was last week, we, we put it back in our infrastructure. Um, but we still have one remaining issue with it, which is the IP. Um, so based on the IP, um, mirror bits, but basically GeoIP um, assign it to um, the United States, even if it's supposed to be running in Netherlands. Um, we still have to, I mean, I asked that question to that mirror maintainer, but um, I have to send him another email because I, I think it was lost in the amount of discussion we had, so. Um, and this there is, yes, Mark, you're muted. So my question was, is that the, given the physical, the geographic location of that thing, it's between two US East Coast other mirrors. So the, the, the breadth of the people who are mistakenly asking for data from a, from a, a, a European server is limited, but it's limited to a swath of the United States that goes from New York City uh, out towards Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, and I was just worried that, I guess, I guess it's probably still okay because they're only going to Europe. It's not like this, the computer's actually sitting in China or in India. So and it's okay for now, I assume? I think it's okay uh, for now. Um, I, I have a draft of a blog post um, to communicate about recent change on the mirror infrastructure. Um, I haven't uh, had the time to finish it, but yeah, it's work in progress right now. And so I guess I'm hoping that we'll have more mirror soon to, to offload those that are actually running. Um, then, yeah. The next topic, I think that's Mark who put it here. So basically we had two major, two releases. Yesterday we had an LTS release and today we had weekly release. Is there anything specific you want to mention here about those release? Muted again. Mark, you, you were muted. I still see you as muted. Yep. I was really pleased with the release checklist. Thanks, Tim, for doing that. That thing just worked great. Uh, and Um, on that on that specific release, um, Garrett made a small Golang script to detect the latest version of Jenkins. And so right now, the script that you have is a Python script that detects the latest weekly version, but do not handle very well the latest table version. Um, and so the thing is, because it's a Python script, it also relies on Python. Um, the, 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 the thing that Garrett did was to have a small binary that we could um, add to the Docker image that we used to, to the release. And so it correctly um, fetched the latest stable release as well. So in this case, it would be 2.263.3. Um, I mean, we are still testing it, but I think it will it, it will it will simplify the the, um, the release checklists at least for stable releases. Yeah, I added a few. I added a few little things. Let's like if you pass in late LTS as the version identifier, it will put, actually pull out the, LT, the latest LTS version. So it just filters them all out. Um, which I think is what you were describing the behavior that you wanted to do. Um, yep. So I, I put on the chat there, the link to the repo, it's being built as binaries and yeah, there's a Docker image there. I'm just playing with the uh, Docker multi-arch support. See if I can so, get it to actually compile inside there. Thanks. So basically the way it's working is it reads the Maven repository, so the metadata uh, XML file. And so for the weekly, it's fairly, it's easy because it's fetched for the latest release. But for the stable, it's a little bit more complicated because we have many different kind of releases. We have releases with, which have uh, characters inside. And so, yeah, there are, I mean, that was not as simple to, to parse every release and to, yeah. So, so Garrett did the last mile to, to have it working for the test, which is nice. 
so on. So, and I assume Gareth will submit the pull request then. That's, that sounds like a really positive thing. So, so Gareth should, should I'll I, I work with Gareth on that, but Gareth should open a pull request on the release repository. So Jenkins infra slash release um, to, and, and maybe, um, um, yeah, on that release to, to use that script instead of Python one. And um, otherwise inside, so we have a Docker image that we call Jenkins infra slash packaging that contain a lot of things, basically all the tooling needed to do the release and the packaging. So it's a quite big image, like one gigabyte um, of this space. And so we should also put that small binary there. I'll put the link okay, uh, cool. after the meeting. Cool, cool. Oh, yeah, I think I think I follow. Yeah, the next steps. Alright, cool. Um, next topic, which is about Docker image changing from Debian stretch to Debian De Buster. Uh, I guess it's Mark. You put that here. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm being a vocal this time. So Debian stretch has reached the end of its life. This that's Debian nine. Uh, official end of support was July of 2020. It's now in the long-term support mode, but that's the base for our default Docker images for Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS and for Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest. That means we're running a version of JDK that's outdated as well. So I've submitted a pull request that is going to switch from Debian 9 to Debian 10. Um, considering that there are other efforts on cleaning up the Docker image that we have, um, should we do a shared blog post on all the changes that we want to do on the Docker images? So we have, obviously we have this change coming from, from Debian, but um, Kara is also working with Debian to, to deprecate some old images and to also switch um, image. So we are we provide um, inbound agent with tools like Maven, Python, Ruby, and so on. And those rely on the default Docker image, which most of the time run as root. And so we are currently changing that behavior to use a Jenkins user by default. So we are just adding the Jenkins user to those images um, and so the idea is to replace um, those that we have right now. The problem is it's a breaking change because all the people who rely on those images um, will soon move from using the root user to the Jenkins user. So we want to we want to to notify people enough in advance about that breaking change. I mean, it's not a big deal in a way that the root user will still be there if people really want to use a, the root user. But yeah. Yeah, it's just to communicate about that coming change. I like that. I, I have, should have thought of that. So let's coordinate this so that it's this, the transition happens for both of them. We can announce them together. And um, that's one of the thing and which is regarding the inbound agent. And another one I've been thinking would be to clean up old Jenkins image um, that we do not recommend our user to use again. So the one that I have in mind, I think, is um, Jenkins CI slash Jenkins, the blue ocean image and stuff like that. I think if we are doing a blog post to 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 notify Docker image changes, maybe it would be nice as well to announce some deprecation. Because last week when we generated the Docker image with Daniel, it took like one hours and we we're really building a lot of Docker images from multiple uh, scenarios, which is, I mean, which I don't think makes sense in our case. Good. Um, any suggestion on this topic? I, I, at least for me, that sounds great. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, we should plan that together. Uh, Ara, Damien, uh, Olivier, work together. Good, good insight, thanks. Um, the last topic, so no, I have two last, I have one last topic that I would like to, to talk before we, we, we mentioned the contributor summit. So in around two weeks, in around two weeks, uh, we'll have the FOSDEM. So we will have a virtual booth at FOSDEM. And I'm just wondering if we should not have like some 
maybe short demo about how we manage our infrastructure, let's say how we deploy Jenkins um, in the Jenkins project. So maybe we can prepare some demos that we would do on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. I mean, with whoever is interested, so we, we could showcase how we deploy, let's say, infra.ci or release.ci, if people are interested to have working on that with me. Um, and so which bring me to the last topic, which is also run for them, uh, the contributor summit. Um, Mark, I think you wanted to, to, to bring this one, so. Yeah, so, so before we go away from this FOSDEM stand, Olivier, did you want to share further on what you're envisioning there? I think that sounds like a great idea. So the uh, demonstration, are you envisioning that live or is it playing a recording of a demo? What do you see? So I don't, we won't have access to, to recording. So basically what FOSDEM provide us, they provide us a website um, available to people who visit the first time. They provide us um, a matrix server, so we would ha will have access to a room, which will be something like um, stand-jenkins, something like that. And so it would be nice to, to put a small agenda there. And we'll also be able to use Jitsi um, if we want to stream any information. So I was more thinking to, let's say, um, yeah, do some um, Maybe not a workshop, but yeah, just live demo um, fusing. But if we do a live demo, it would be nice to to announce a schedule enough in advance. So people yeah, so in encourage people to attend, announce demo times and themes so that people attend those times. Yep. I like that. I think I it would like be that. really, really nice to have that demo. I, I will be um around at Fatima, I will certainly be on the stand. And um, are we gonna do the AMA slots with plugin maintainers? Um, I'm not working on that. So okay. I have, I mean, I will, okay. I will, I will, I have, I personally, I have no idea. Right okay. now. So I thought that Alyssa Tong was working that. Uh, okay. If she's that. not, propose it to her in advocacy and outreach because I'd be happy to be there as an ask me anything session on a particular plugin. I'm confident Tim is willing to be there as well on some other plugins, aren't you, Tim? <laughs> Configuration is code. I could just ask me anything, config is code. Yeah, I could try doing some time, but it's harder for me with it being online. Much easier if I could go there and have a whole weekend. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That was all that I had on the this my stand questions then, Olivia. It feels like we've okay. got we've got plenty still to do. Uh yes. Um regarding the last topic for today, which is a contributor summit. So the contributor summit is a nice um moment where we can um, look at what we did in the Jenkins Infra project, highlight, highlight major changes, and also discuss about what's coming for the, at least six months or um, coming for the year. And so that's also a really good opportunity for every committee members to maybe to, to I would say, encourage to follow a specific path. Um, so if you have any ideas, uh, I think that's the right time. Otherwise, I'll probably start collecting stats and information for the, for the contributor summit. Um, Mark, do you have anything you want to, to add on that topic? Well, so, so in conversations with other people, I think we may have a track that would be well suited to be the combination of infrastructure security and release all together as talking about, hey, what does it mean to heighten the security of the process we use to release code, including plugins, et cetera. And so, so it's, I was thinking with Tim as release officer and Olivia Yu as, as infrastructure officer, we may want to, to have some conversations with Daniel and say, all right, are there things where we might consider rather than independent tracks for release and for infra and for security, we might do a single big track, which is the, the combination of all those components 
to, to improve the general security profile of the system we use to release and generate product, to generate code. Um, I'm just wondering, how do you want to, to address that? Um... The, way I've been, the way I've been hoping was that people would make comments in this, this agenda document and suggest tracks that they think would work. So I'd started this security track as, as an idea. And, and as I look at security track, I thought, oh, it may be that we need Olivier there and we need Gareth there and we need Tim there to have conversations about those topics. Okay. That was, that was what I was thinking anyway. Okay. I look, I look at, I look at those um, ideas. Okay. And, and that's, that's still shaping. That's really all that I had on the topic. Okay, um, I'll try. I'll try to look at that. But yeah, definitely the contributor summit is, I think, really important. And in the past, um, we got many great feedback. So yeah, I'll try to take the time to look at it correctly. I'll just jump in and and say um, the CDF has a security SIG, so it's not FOSDEM or contributor summit related. But on that on that idea of um, security, there there is this quite interesting uh, SIG that's going on on security. And those who are involved with that with the Jenkins project may want to start attending it. I can put the link uh, in the meeting notes. Actually, I'll stick it here as well. What, what, I'm, what, what I'm wondering on this topic is, should we focus on identifying gaps that we have to work in the coming years? Or instead, should we uh, should we, 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 we take that opportunity like a way to do an audit on, of what we have? I was assuming we would, it was more thinking about gaps than about audit, but audit for me was going to be a, if, if we do an audit, for instance, the doc SIG will do an audit of doc content as prep for this summit. And then we'll discuss the results of that audit in the, in the summit itself. But but my thought was that the, that audit is a prep rather than a okay. than a, an outcome of this. Okay, that's a good point. Okay, any other suggestion? Uh, all right, then I think we are done. Um, thanks for your time, and see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks. Yeah.